Yeah, or it could be your pillow. Oh, hey there. How are you? This is Dr. Evan Osar with Integrative Movement Insider. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're having a great start to your week. Bucky and I were just discussing his neck issues. And many of your clients have chronic neck issues, especially that chronic trigger point right here, right here in their upper back, which is really their neck. It's where the levator scapula actually comes off the angle of the scapula and goes up into the neck. So today I'd like to share with you a very common cause of that chronic trigger point, as well as an easy solution. And then also share with you how exercises, common exercises, pulling exercises, for example, will actually drive the scapula into a position that causes that trigger point or contributes to that trigger point. And then give you access to a brand new resource. It's actually not brand new. However, it's relatively new because we just did it in, the, I should say in the last few months, Jill and I, two anatomy geeks, we covered this very topic of the head and neck and how this relates to your client's issues. So first of all, let's talk about the anatomy and why anatomy is important. It's not so that you can impress your friends with your anatomy knowledge, unless that's what you want to do. <laughs> if, if they're easily impressed by your anatomy knowledge, my friends are not impressed by my anatomy knowledge, <laughs> even though Jill and I have a good time on Two Anatomy Geeks. For those of you that are part of our community, thank you for being part of the Two Anatomy Geeks community. However, it's important to understand anatomy because that helps understand or explain why some of your clients have these chronic trigger points like in their levator scapula. So the levator, levator scapula comes again from that superior angle of the scapula right here and it runs up into the first four bones of your neck. So it inserts into the transverse processes of the first four bones of the neck. It has multiple functions. Number one, it helps stabilize the scapula. It can also help rotate that scapula into downward rotation. It can also help to rotate the neck towards the same side, so towards the left side in this case, and it can also help to side bend the head and neck as well. It can also elevate, hence the term levator is elevate the scapula. So it's got a lot of functions. Unfortunately, when our clients have suboptimal, we'll, we'll use the word sub suboptimal, suboptimal strategies for stabilizing their scapula, levator scapula is one of those muscles that can become overactive. And that's why a lot of your clients will be like, yeah, that chronic trigger point, that neck knot. And they're always trying to stretch it. So one of the, the first things you need to do when you're addressing chronic issues, one of the most common strategies we teach our clients is sometimes you have to stop doing the things that are aggravating or contributing to the issue. So one of the things that will contribute to chronic levator scapular trigger points is when you keep your client keeps overstretching it. Like this stretch, even though it may feel good temporarily, actually will contribute to greater levator scapula issues. Because for many of your clients, especially your clients that are active worker outers, <laughs> and they use a strategy, a shoulder gripping strategy. And I'm a perfect example of that for years and years and years. And even now I still get into a habit where I'll, I will tend to squeeze my shoulder blades down and back. And if you look at my scapula, here's where they actually should be sitting. And when you start to squeeze the shoulder blades down and back, you can see a big slope of my shoulder. It's not a great strategy for your back. It's definitely not a great strategy for your neck because what it does is starts pulling that scapula into downward rotation. The scapula needs to be up here somewhere around the level T2. So don't worry about exactly where it is. Just know that when you're looking at your client, you should not see this big slope of their shoulder or long slope of their shoulders. They should be relatively up here where they belong. Now, obviously, they don't belong up here either. So it's this sort of happy medium between being too low and being too high. For many of your clients that have chronic neck tightness and a chronic trigger point right here, they massage it, they trigger point it, they use their you know vibration gun, whatever those things are called. <laughs> it's usually because this muscle is much more overactive than it should be in the role of scapular stability. So let me share with you a quick, easy exercise. I'll, I'll use Bucky. Now, obviously, he doesn't have any muscles on his body here. It's a little, little atrophy, a little sarcopenic here. What we're going to do, a very simple strategy to start to improve the position and control of the scapula is to have your client put their hand on the wall slightly above shoulder height. Now this will not work for every client, but it works for a lot of clients because what this does is it allows the scapula to move into upward rotation, which is what we need to actually stabilize the scapula appropriately using serratus anterior, which is that muscle that runs across the first nine ribs or attaches to the first nine ribs and attaches to the 
interior border, the inside border of the scapula, it allows the scapula to be more stabilized on the rib cage. So what we want to do is position the hands. So I'll go over to I'll go over to this pole here. So what you want to do is teach your client to position their arm against the wall a little bit higher than shoulder height because that allows them to go into that upward rotation and posterior tilted position and then just have them hold that position and just breathe. So send their breath into their rib cage so they start to learn how to isometrically control a scapula because you want your client to stay here as they lower their arm back down. What happens for a lot of our clients, and this is why we don't like exercises like this. So if you look at a lot of our exercises, you'll you will rarely see us do exercise where we're doing squeezing apart or pulling a band all the way apart and squeezing the scapula together because it's not teaching the client how to control their scapula. It's just teaching the client how to move their scapula, which is a very small piece of training. The majority of our clients actually need to learn how to control their scapula. So this position, teaching them how to be in upward rotation and posterior tilt and then lowering their arm down without out a lot without allowing the scapula to come into this downward rotated position is one important key and probably one of the most important keys, if not the most important key to improving the scapula control. Now, once you've done that, again, I just, we just have our clients work on that on a regular basis. This is their, their sort of posture exercise during their day. Get out of your chair, put your hands up against the wall, hold this position, breathe, make sure you keep that neck and rib cage aligned. And then just teach them how to align and control a scapula on the rib cage. It seems so simple. However, it's a very powerful way to teach your clients how to align and control that scapula. Now, of course, you then, you then need to teach them how to incorporate this into functional exercise. Because what a lot of clients will do is then they go to their do their exercise, and then what they, they end up doing is pulling themselves right back down into that downward rotated position. So we want to teach our clients how to row and maintain that upward rotation and posterior tilt. And for a lot of your clients, it's stopping the elbow when it's in line with the body, not allowing them to bring the elbow back, which then drives the scapula into more anterior tilt and then fires up that levator scapula. Because again, if you watch, come a little closer, if you watch, it actually drives my scapula up into my neck and it overuses by overusing that levator scapula. So again, align your head and neck, your client's head and neck, align the rib cage, grab the handle. Now it's pull to where the ar upper arm is in line with their body, control their scapular control through the eccentric phase of the exercise pattern. And that way you have much better chance of keeping that levator scapula more in its normal activity by using the muscles like the serratus anterior, like using the muscles of the, like the lower trapezius, the, the muscle that comes from the lower border of the scapula down to the spine. These muscles help to maintain the upward rotation and posterior tilt, takes the pressure off the neck, keeps the scapula stabilized where it belongs. You don't have to teach your clients to retract and depress and do all the crazy stuff that so, is so prominent in our industry. And you really help your clients with that chronic neck pain and tension. And that makes your clients real happy. It's really amazing. Like it seems so simple. Like change the position, modify the position so the client is in a more optimal position, teach them not to over recruit that muscle during their exercise patterns, and you will solve, relieve a lot of this chronic neck tension and chronic tension that's related to, people will say things to you like, yes, my pillow, it must be my pillow. Well, maybe it is, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's the exercises they're doing during the day, and then when they go to bed at night, they're just lying down, and that trigger point that's been overactive all day long is just creeping up. Stop the things that are contributing to the problem, like driving the arms so far back behind the body or squeezing down and back, and avoid the overstretching of it for some of your clients that have that slope, that dramatic slope to their shoulders, and then teach them how to control it during the functional exercise patterns, and you'll help a lot of your clients with chronic neck issues and become that go-to solution Go to specialists in your region for clients that have chronic neck and upper back issues because this is also a common issue related to upper back issues as well. So I hope that makes sense. Hope you learned a little bit about the levator scapula and the scapular stabilizers. And if not, then maybe just reinforce what you already know. That's a cool thing as well. And if you're looking for more information about working with clients with chronic head and neck issues, we did Jill and I, Two Anatomy Geeks. Not so much Bucky here. He did not contribute to the series. He's very sad that he did not. However, he would have contributed if he was there. We did a brand, or I should say,
brand new as of the last few months. <laughs> we did a series on the head and neck, and we really covered the anatomy, the sternocleidomastoid, the scalenes, the deep neck flexors, the deep neck extensors, as well as the rotators. So that way you have that basis of how the head and neck function, how they relate to the rib cage. Because again, the base right here, the thorax, is the base for the head and neck. If your base is off, your head and neck will be off. The head and neck are almost just an extremity coming off. It's, it's kind of like almost like a fifth extremity coming off the rib cage. So if we think about the head and neck like that, it changes the dynamics of how we think about it and how we actually train the head and neck. A lot of head and neck training is really just about aligning the head and neck and making sure that we're not doing things to aggravate the head and neck. So we'll cover the anatomy so you feel very confident with the anatomy. And more importantly, we'll teach you the assessments and corrective exercises to address the muscles of the head and neck help your clients improve their posture because posture is related to function. There's a couple great studies that just came out. Actually, there's quite a few studies that came out recently about the relationship of the head and neck to respiration. And they took these clients uh, in these studies, multiple studies show this, when they bring the head into a forward head position, it actually changes the respiration, changes the force of respiration, it decreases the force of respiration, and it increases the activity of the accessory muscles of respiration. It makes sense. However, there's lots of people saying that posture doesn't matter. So there's some studies coming out now that's actually proving that yes, posture matters. So we'll talk about why the head and neck are so important to the nerves that are coming out of the head and neck that come down and innervate the shoulder as well as in a very important muscle that sits right up in here, diaphragm. So we'll talk about that so you feel very confident about the head and neck. We, learn, we teach it in a way that helps you learn it, absorb it, and apply it. It's really the learning, the absorbing, and the applying that makes this series so much fun for us to do, and more importantly, allows you as health and fitness professionals to learn this information and more importantly, apply it to your clients so you can actually address their issues and really attract more individuals that have these issues that just haven't gotten relief from most exercise strategies or many exercise strategies. So the link is below or above this video, wherever you're watching it. If you have any questions about the levator scapula, the, the scapular stability, as well as the head or neck, Leave them here and I will be sure to answer them. So I hope you have a great Tuesday. Check out Two Anatomy Geeks, the Head and Neck series. We also have the shoulder and the elbow, wrist, and hand that we did as a complete three part. Each part is three parts. <laughs> the head and neck is three parts. The rotator cuff is three parts. And the elbow, wrist, and hand are three parts. We put it together in a bundle so that way you really have a complete look at the head and neck, rotator cuff, as well as, as the elbow, wrist, and hand. So that, that way you become that go-to specialist for your current clients and it can attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay for your expertise. So hope to see you in the Two Anatomy Geeks community. Make it a great day. Go out there and lead. Next time on Integrative Movement Insider, we're doing another special episode here this week. I'll be coming back to talk about the knee and the valgus knee and how valgus knee issues are sometimes related to the big toe. So we'll talk more about that on Thursday on Facebook Live. Make it a great week, and we'll see you on Thursday. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.